somebody else enters or comes. Ready? And Jan, if you could just mute. Thanks. So we're going to start. Christy, you don't need anything yet. We're going to do a slideshow first. We recording or no, not yet. Oh, we're recording. So good afternoon, everyone. So excited to be with you this afternoon. Thank you to the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us not only to have our morning class today, but now to have an afternoon session as well. I am going to do a repeat of the same lesson that we had this morning. So those of you who are with us this morning, this is going to be just a, a wonderful way to extend what we started uh, into the afternoon. And welcome to those of you who are off campus, as well as, as you who are here in person. This is Art with Liz. We are celebrating Women's History Month. And because of that, we are looking at solely at women artists because of the great contribution they've made to the world of visual arts. There have been many, many great female visual artists, but today we're gonna to focus on Alma Woodsy Thomas. We're gonna start with a slideshow of her work. I'm going to take a second to open up the slideshow. And then we're gonna look at and talk about her work because I think it's going to inspire everyone in the work that we're going to do today. And those of you who are here this morning, you don't have to listen to the lecture, although unfortunately you'll have to hear it. Fortunately or unfortunately, you'll have to hear it. <laughs> so here we go. Alma Thomas, I find her to be one of the most inspiring and exciting artists ever. She was an abstract artist, but in her early years, she was an extraordinary figurative realistic painter. And I'm going to show you one of the kinds of pieces of artwork she did in her early days. And then we're going to jump right into her abstract work. She was born September 22nd, 1891. She was an African-American artist and teacher. She lived for most of her life in Washington, D.C., and she is recognized as one of the most important American painters of the 20th century. So she is most famous for her very bright, and this word is used to describe her work often, exuberant, colorful painters of the 20th century. And here we go. She died February 24th, 1978. She had a nice long life. Oops, sorry, wait, let's go back to the beginning. I forgot to hit the play button so you can see a full screen version. So you can see that she was a highly skilled representational artist. Hi, are you here for art class? No, too bad. Next time, you can see that her figurative work was very skilled, beautifully rendered. She captured, I think, the elegance, the, I don't know, what's the best word to describe this woman? Almost the queenly presence of this woman, her, her straight backed posture. This is a person who definitely commands the room. 
notice her use of color because Alma Thomas was a master of color her whole life, whether she was doing realistic portraiture or her later work that she was most famous for, her abstract work. The use of the primary color red up against that intense green background shows that she really knew how to work with color theory. And those of you who are my veteran, most experienced artists know that when you use the primary color with its secondary opposite, you know, on the color wheel, red is opposite green, you get these very exciting, strong, bold contrasts. And Ms. Thomas knew that using that red with the green would really emphasize the importance of this woman and make her dominate the composition of this painting. It's beautifully painted. The proportions of the face are, are just perfect. The red in her cheeks and her lips against that green background just make me really want to stare at her face for as long as possible. Her use of darks and lights to render the figure in a three-dimensional way, very beautiful as well. She earned her teach. She became a teacher for most of her life. She had a 35 year career teaching art at the Washington uh, DC Shaw Junior High School. But while she was teaching, she never gave up her own art practice. She was always doing her own art. So this is the kind of work that she made her name doing. This is what she was famous for. This kind of art is called color field painting, although she liked to call herself an abstract artist. And an interesting point about her technique, the color field artists of that period of time used tape they would lay tape in grids on the canvas so that they would get a sharp, hard edge to the shapes that they were creating. They would lay the tape grid down first. They would paint, sometimes right over the tape. They would wait for the paint to dry, and then they would peel the tape off. And that would create perfect shapes with very clean edges, but not Alma. She would draw the shapes first in pencil, <laughs> excuse me, and then paint the shapes in, almost as if she created a coloring book for herself. So she really broke out of the definition of what a color field painter was supposed to do back in the day. She earned her teaching degree from the University of the District of Columbia, which at that time was known as the Minor Normal School. And she was the first graduate of Howard University's art department. She maintained connections with Howard University throughout her life. Did I mention she was an African-American artist? Okay, I wasn't sure I did that with this group. She experienced a great deal of racial prejudice throughout her life. In fact, her family was forced to move from Columbus, Georgia, where she was born, to Washington, D.C. because of racial violence. Um, there were a lot of race riots in that part and massacres in that part of Georgia in the early 1900s. And her family, for safety's sake, moved to Washington, D.C. to escape the violence. It turned out to be a very good thing for her, not just because she escaped violence, but because she was able to go to libraries. Washington, D.C. was a little bit less segregated and racist than Georgia, and Black children were at least allowed to go to libraries back at that time. She went to high school 
in Washington, D.C., a school called Armstrong Technical High School. And I love this quote from Alma herself. She said, when I entered the art room, it was like entering heaven. And this school became, the art classes in this school became the foundation of her life. She wanted to become an architect. In her early years, she excelled in math and science and architecture classes in high school, but because she was a woman and a woman of color, she was discouraged from doing that. And she began teacher training at the minor normal school. And she gained her teaching credential in 1913. She started teaching in Maryland. She loves the circle motif, and I'm gonna show you quite a few of her paintings that have this circular composition. This one radiates out of the center. Again, her love for color is obviously apparent and easy to see in this piece. I do want you to notice how she fills the entire page. There is very little empty space showing. Think about the amount of time and effort required to make these. Remember, she draws each and every little shape before she actually paints them. So it's pretty labor intensive, this kind of work. In 1921, she entered Howard University at the age of 30. She never gave up on education. She continually went back to school throughout her life, trying to get more information about how to become a better artist and to learn more about her craft and to gain more skills. She earned a Bachelor's of Science in Fine Arts in 1924 from Har Howard and became the first graduate from the university's fine arts program. And listen to this, possibly, well, we know she was possibly the first African-American woman to earn a bachelor's degree in art and maybe the first American woman to, of any racial background to earn a bachelor of art degree in the United States of America. Pretty awesome. She began teaching art at Shaw Junior High School, which was a black school in a segregated public school system in Washington, DC in 1924. She was 35 years of age. Oh no, sorry, she was there for 35 years and she occupied the same classroom. This is my career. I taught in the same school for 38 years and occupied the same classroom it is a special, lucky place to be for your entire life. It is a very special learning environment, not just for the kids, but for the teacher. So this was a very productive time for her in her own art process because ideas percolated for her. She was constantly experimenting and doing new things with the kids that helped her improve in her own practice and her own skills. And she continued with her own education during this time. She loved painting, especially with watercolors at this time. And she has been called, quote unquote, a brilliant watercolorist. She would go to New York on her summer break and spend a lot of time in the Metropolitan Museum of Art looking at art she also attended Teachers College of Columbia University, and she earned her master's in art education in 1934. She wrote her thesis on the use of marionettes. She loved puppets. As a very young child, she didn't take art classes, but she made puppets and made little figures out of clay. There was, I think, a stream in her backyard and she would dig the clay off the banks, out of the banks of the stream to make little clay sculptures. And in the summer of 1935, she further studied marionettes in New York City 
with a German-American puppeteer named Tony Sarg. And he's apparently the father of modern pu puppetry. So that was another direction in her creative life that she followed. She's, you know, what we call a didactic person. She was constantly soaking up new and varied knowledge from a variety of sources. So this is one of her circle paintings, but it's very different from the other two that we looked at because this one, the circle is not in the middle, which to me requires a certain amount of genius and a lot of risk taking to take the step to not put it in the middle. Because when we think about circles, they tend to be, well, they are symmetrical objects and we're always tempted to put symmetrical things in the middle, right? Particularly circles, because they radiate out from the center. They start from a point in the middle. But she opted to put it off center, which is what makes this painting, I think, so exciting and interesting. In this morning's class, someone said it looked like a tunnel and that it had depth of field to it. Any guesses as to how she achieved that? What makes that happen in this painting? Any thoughts or ideas? Donna. Right. It goes from light to dark. It flows and then you go gradually along the wall of this thing to this dark, this dark thing. Exactly. So the black is the center and it is the dark focus in the middle. Also, the cool blues and greens and violets are in the middle. And they kind of suck you in from the hot, bright colors on the outside. So she really understood color theory, and she used it to her advantage. And what? Absolutely about light and dark color and how they can work to create depth of field. So not only was she an artist, though, she was a community leader, particularly for other artists. She wanted to share her knowledge. In 1936, she founded an organization called the School Arts League Project to bring art opportunities to children. In 1943, she helped found the Barnett Aiden Gallery, which was the first successful Black-owned private gallery in the United States. She served as the gallery's vice president. This was pivotal for her because it helped her develop as a professional artist, helped heighten her awareness of art trends and directions, and it provided exposure for local artists. And that helped inspire her in her own work. In the 1940s, Thomas joined a group called the Little Paris Group, and this was a group of Black Washington artists who got together to practice their skills. They did life drawing um, and they were taught by, they were members of the Howard University art faculty, but they would also have visiting professors from Howard University give lectures and instruction as well. They could work from the life model, et cetera. In 1958, she visited art centers all over Western Europe through the auspices of Tyler University of Art in Philadelphia. And then she also went to the American University, which at that time had the most avant-garde art department in the nation. And she was 59 years old when she did that. Woohoo! I think she was pretty awesome. You're never too old to learn and start new things. So this one's a bit different because it's kind of a random composition. 
There's nothing regular about this the way there was in the circular paintings or the first one we looked at, which was a series of stripes. And yet it works. As always, folks, if you have anything to say about the paintings, please share. All comments are excellent as far as I'm concerned. I love to hear what you think about the art. I like the kind of yellow sunburst on the right and at the bottom, or maybe they're flowers, I don't know. I love this one too, Liz. Yes, I can't go back, but we can look at it again at the end, Jennifer, if you want. And here's another circle. I love the way she makes the circle sometimes fill the entire page, go all the way out to the edge and beyond. Folks, this morning we're talking too about how they radiate, you know, how there's a lot of movement and rhythm in her paintings. And I feel that and see that as well. Why do you love them, Jennifer? Any thoughts on what it is that attracts you to them? Can you put it into words? Sometimes it's hard to do that. It is. Um, I love her choice of colors. It, it almost gives a feeling of stained glass. Yes. Um, it, and it's it's just like the placement isn't perfect, yet I see the perfection in it. I like that. It, it's it's an imperfect perfection, if that makes sense to me. I, love I really like her work. I really like her work. It's it's really cool. I do, too. And I like your statement. It's imperfect perfection. Which yeah. We could also interpret it to mean it is her style and nobody else's. Yeah. When you look at a micron microscope, it looks like the, the elements, you know, is it orbiting uh, Yes, like, yep. Some kind of energy at the center, and there's another wing of energy, and there's negatives and positives. Yeah, so it's like the cross section of an atom. Yeah, like some. Yeah. Or it could be cell, a, a cell like under a microscope, a bit of living matter under a microscope. I agree, Donna, nice observation. Yes. So listen to this. When, when Thomas began her advanced studies at American University when she was 59, she was still doing the figurative painting, like the first image we saw. Oh, wow. She was still a figurative painter, and she had not started the shift to abstract expressionism. So it was during the 50s that that started happening. Wow. From figurative painting to cubism, and then to abstract expressionism. Wow. Awesome. So you're never too old. It's never too late to learn new things. So... She didn't start her full-time professional career until she was 68 or 69 years old when she retired in 1960. And she began working from home. Her studio space was her living room and her kitchen. Yeah. Kind of like another artist we've talked about, Alice Neal. So you don't need a huge professional studio. You can work from anywhere. She would hold her canvas in her lap and just sit there and paint. She was criticized by other artists, even other Black artists, because at that time, figurative art was the expected done thing for African-American artists, but she didn't want to do that. She wanted to do this color field, abstract painting, and she followed her muse. She, she did what she wanted to do, and she said, quote, unquote, the use of color in my paintings is of paramount importance to me, 
Through color, I have sought to concentrate on beauty and happiness in my painting rather than on man's inhumanity to man. Color is life and light is the mother of color. So rather than using her painting in that overt political way, she wanted to use her art to convey a message of beauty rather than as a political message. So this is a very different kind of painting of hers, very different from the others we've looked at. It should remind you of another artist. We've looked at another abstract painter, Henri Matisse, and she was inspired quite a bit by his work. I love this painting for the color, but also for the empty white shapes surrounding the color. They're almost as powerful as the colored shapes in this composition, particularly the very tiny, narrow shapes for me, they have a lot of power and force. They created a very strong tension between the shapes on either side of them. And I find that very exciting to look at. This one in particular here, this one, I think are very beautiful. I like how this painting is primarily blue, but then she puts those touches of, of bright color. It really, it really makes for an exciting picture. In 1972, at the ripe old age of 81, Thomas was the first African-American woman to have a solo exhibition at the Whitney Museum of American Art. And that was the beginning of her fame. Her career really took off at that point. And, you know, now in death, she has really made quite a name for herself. Her work is shown everywhere um, and it is owned by many collections, including the Whitney and other famous museums around the world. Talk about color. And she loves this hot pink. She has used it in many of her paintings. This is a different kind of Alma Thomas. I believe it's a watercolor. We had a deep discussion about this this morning. So I'm not sure. It does look like just a fast sketch compared to her other works. A lot of movement in this. It almost looks like a wave breaking on the shore. It has a watery effect. And I don't know who painted this. I don't think it's a self-portrait. I think it is a painting of Alma Thomas herself, though. And I like it. That's why I put it in the slide deck. I wish I could have met her. So I'm showing these last few slides to show you in your own work today, there's many different directions you can go in. You don't have to limit yourself to the circle. You could do a landscape, for example, like this one. This is one of her paintings. There's the circle motif again. This one is interesting. Do you see what she has done deliberately? The white, I didn't notice this when I showed it this morning. The white rays that are coming out from the center, radiating out from the middle. kind of like lightning. I think she did that on purpose. It's very cool. You can do stripes. 
And that's the end of our slideshow. I hope you enjoyed Alma Thomas. She died, uh, as I think I mentioned, in 1978. She died, unfortunately, on the operating table in Howard University on February 24th. So any questions? Remember, I'm not an art historian, but maybe I can answer a question that you have about her life or her technique. I think she was amazing and her work is beautiful. Okay, our project for today is to do our own abstract painting inspired by her kind of work. I'm gonna put a painting up on the screen for you to either copy or to think about and do in her style. Um, think about the color wheel, red, yellow, and blue are the three primaries. The secondaries, violet, orange, green. Have fun mixing and experimenting. Here's my challenge to you. You're all veteran students of mine. See how many different colors you can create this afternoon. There's also white and black, so you can create different shades and tints. I recommend you draw first in pencil and then color in as Alma did. Ready to go? I will be here to help. Jennifer, I'm here to help you too. Jennifer, you can just call out if you need help, all right? Okay, I'm assuming you heard me. Let's go to work. Yes, I heard you. Okay. I'm sorry, Liz, I had to grab the phone. <laughs> I understand. I, I'm thrilled that you can do work and this both. Just don't get in trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna put a picture up right now. I just wanted to finish talking to Jennifer first. So now I'm gonna put up a picture by Alma Thomas for you to look at. Just give me a second. Oh, I did that wrong. Silly girl. Okay, I'm going to enlarge the picture. Jennifer, can you see it? Oh, thank you. Yes, I can, Liz. Thank you. I like this one especially because it's not regular. It's very loose and free. Oh, Jennifer, did you want to look at that uh, one picture that was in the slideshow or are you good to go? Oh, let I'm good. I found it online. Did you have something that you made that you want to share with me first? Lauren has it on her phone. Oh, I'm coming to look. I'm going to look at it. Thank you, Liz. You're so welcome. Wow, I love it. This could be a village. You can get a village. Dry cake of the village. Then you just say on water. 
Actually, it reminds me of this painting. Um, Jennifer, I like that piece. That you is. Are you actually working on it right now? Yes, ma'am. Is it acrylic or watercolor? And it's watercolor on watercolor paper. Nice, nice yeah, like color, it. nice color choices too. Keep keep going. Thank you. Yeah, it's coming up good. I like it. Good. I'll reminds keep you posted. Me, it reminds me of the picture we have up on the screen. Different colors, but that same kind of textural effect. Similar, and I've I've been I've been almost doing this kind of an effect when I just like play with mixing my colors. Good. So I, I feel like I've been practicing this. I'm I'm happy about this. And I do have to log off, unfortunately. No. Um, but I'm going to send Lauren um, updates. And I'll email you updates, Liz. And I'm going to be there in person very soon. Yes. I miss everybody. I miss the whole scene. We need, a, we need an after work one, Lauren. Okay. Yeah, I would like that. I would love that. We could do All right, that gang. once a month like we do the afternoon class once a month. That would be really cool. That would be fun. That There's would be awesome. That's for me, just saying. All right. Keep in touch. I'll, I'll keep in touch with the updates, Liz. Thank you so much. Good luck. So good to see. Send me an e a picture, a JPEG of the finished art. I will. I promise. All right. Good luck. If you want to finish all this food and it stays clean, rather than putting that in the dryer, you can even pour it in the two way jar. The jar is in one. I'm good in yourself. One of the women happens to smell me. And the other lady is very good. Did you notice them yesterday? They were in the afternoon. They're actually in Bulgaria. 
The woman, the beautiful white hair, told me she's Bulgarian. It's, or, I mean, her hair is this, is this, is this color. She, and she says, her friend who speaks a little bit of English told me she was an art teacher in Bulgaria. She's pretty beautiful. So maybe so you guys might want to connect us. Well, I'm just letting you know if you want to connect with them. They, they seem to like the art classes, so maybe they'll come back. And in yesterday's special, there were three of them, but one of them didn't really like art at all. She was kind of sad. Learn on how to hat, a white knit hat. Ram, yeah, she didn't do. I didn't like either. I didn't want to do that. Oh, okay. That's okay. Yeah, there were actually three. Yeah, the, the third one in the hat had the most danger. Yeah, she's the She's the Yeah. Okay. I feel like there are more and more Eastern European people coming. That's true. These people who live in the world. But you don't think it has anything to do with no, no. What about these people? Maybe some other people, young people, young people who are uh, more people stay in They don't stay in the people don't think that they're not going to be solved. Yeah. Yeah.
Deus. Suddenly there's this mumps outbreak in New Jersey. That's one of the ones I never had as a kid. I had chicken pox as an adult. That was not fun.
changing So big and heavy, you couldn't take it out even. So difficult. Yes. That's the bread. You cannot. I told you this many times. It's it's crappy paint. It's not high quality paint. And you're never going to get it. There is trouble in jars. In the little jars, you can get very cheap. There is no cheating in art. No cheating? No, but if you're trying to train yourself to mix purple, then go for it. But you're never going to get a true purple. Join the two of them. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be a shape that touches. It stun things or stun now. Stun. No, I don't care about it. Stun now. Join them together. And it doesn't even have to touch. Yeah, like an intermediate.
you don't. We told you that. Where did you get that? Yeah. <laughs> we do have too much of our <laughs> Where Where did you go to school? Just high school or middle school? Or music? <laughs> no, I, this is my favorite part of this painting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's so what? That's what's kind of cool about it. <laughs> I think we go to art school in order for us to let go. Do, try and do what your heart is telling you, not your brain. Don't try not to overthink.
You need to decide about shape and are you going to do more of these of tile pieces or is this going to be flat? Not sure you want to go. No, it's not that I'd like what you said. Think about what something this bright is going to do to the rest of the thing. So now I want you to think. It may work, it may not. I don't know. No, I don't know. It might work. No. I'm not a painter. Well, I want to put another kind of red. You could mix another kind of red. <laughs> um, I like it better from this direction. Is this soft? This one? Or maybe you need something light or distinct with light. Um, so before you rub away, maybe you need some white accent. Mm -hmm. Like you would highlight the spider or the white dots or outline some of the squares. I don't know, but it needs a little more definite shape. And it might need it with a light color, not a dark, but a light. Are you going to do? And it may be time to start thinking about moving away and just So each layer is going to be I think music, art, dance, the, the visual manifestation of the mind, the incredible thing, the visual and oral manifestation of the human mind is an incredible thing. I just thought of that. I don't know why I never thought of that. Yes. Language is kind of ego. Well, ego comes from language. Yeah. Language is the destroyer of
unless, of course, you're a poet. Mm -hmm. Poet poetry is art. Which we're going to do next. But I think people communicate better through the arts than they do with the the fiction, the poetry, the music, the lyrics communicate better that way than they do with the debate, an argument, and politics. Much as I'm fascinated by politics. Noam Chomsky. Now you might want to go silent, but I don't use it. Interesting that the, the Brits who invented the experience of learning, the Brits have nothing to do with that. Invented the experience of learning. The Brits have no problem that. They're just looking to go sit in a chair and back straight and memorize mm -hmm. and you know, learning. When I went to teachers' training, that's all the good part. It's the privilege. Yeah. 
This time of year is a little easier because the days are still relatively short. Uh, or it's a daylight morning and it's not hot. The worst, I mean, first of all, we were married, mom died in Washington. That was a hard time. I don't know what that was. And then when else? And it's very, very important. It's a very spiritual person. Him, he who is great in proportion to his power, it is essential. Is a religious practice that for him is a spiritual practice. It's a really incredible practice for him to have made. The most non Christian. But it's not so different. Yeah, it's not. not different at all. Um, we don't have to share, right? Can you rather keep me? Yeah. One of my problems with sharing, we talk about this since we're a small group. Yeah, I know. Something I have to deal with. Okay. 
You don't like giving up control. that I, I never tell you what to do because I want to do That's we have three minutes so Wow. Let's see, I think we're just going to see. Is there a team program in there? It's a piece of this mic that I got. I think you should be able to bring it. Good job. Good job. No, 
and I have this new job. I am reviewing grant applications. Like this one is a lot. I will what to exchange place at people. I go with the exchange place. Do you think you Almost. She wants I don't walk every day. I used to walk every day. I used to walk every day. You could have to walk up all the way to bed. You could have to walk every day. But you could have to walk every day. I give you my. You want to take your out of your flavor bleeding here. St. Patrick's Day. God. I wore green. I got to wish everybody St. Patrick's Day, though. Is this still being recorded there? Say goodbye. Um, it's a little early to say goodbye, but I think I'm going to stop the share. Stopping the share, if anyone is listening at home. This is the end of Alma Thomas. We here at the library are going to start cleaning up. I hope you enjoyed this session. 
not quite ready to say goodbye. Um, next week, we'll, we will be having another class about a famous woman artist. We will still be in March. Oh, my goodness. I thought I'd stop share. We seem to have... I don't know. It's, the toolbar popped up as I was hitting stop share. So folks at home, I don't know if you heard me. We will continue our celebration of Women's History Month next month with another female visual artist that we will talk about and look at. In the meantime, Art On, um, wonderful show at the Metropolitan Museum of Art on the Harlem Renaissance. I recommend it highly. And a lot of art going on this weekend. I think the weather's going to be gorgeous. Take advantage of it and go see art or do art. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And I will see you next week. I won't say goodbye just yet, but soon, everyone. Here we do have to clean up. I'm so sorry. You have to wash your brushes in the ladies' room. Please, you know, be respectful of the fact that it is a public restroom. Let's not make a mess. I know. Take an extra piece of paper too to put on top of it. Be aware of the fact that when you get where you're going, you want to peel that top layer off so that it doesn't slip too much underneath your knee because it will ruin. It won't come off and it'll ruin. Else has soft pastels, so I'm starting to close up boxes here. Oh, good. Thank you, Donna. That's great. I want to waste. Wild pastels and soft pastels. Anybody have any? No?
All right, going to say goodbye to everyone. It's been a great class. I hope you enjoyed learning about Alma Thomas and appreciating her, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah.